on this episode of Next Rounds on Me. Don't fan it, just take it up. Right there? Uh, yeah. Good. We have an exciting guest. This is the first time the show has a legitimate golfer coming on, and not to mention he's blind. What? United States best blind golfer, Mario Tabia. He's on the show today. He is so impactful with his story and his purpose that I cannot wait to share this with you. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome back into another exciting episode of Next Rounds on Me. I'm Jimmy Andriotti, and today we're at Lumberton, New Jersey at Golden Pheasant Golf Club, and I'm here with Mario Tabia. I'm very excited to have you here with us today. You just came off that tournament win. How are you feeling about today? I don't know. I, ho I hope I can match that same performance here. It'll be Jimmy. I don't know. It's going to be a tall order, but I'll try. I've been playing blind golf for 15 years. I've been playing golf for about 35 years. I'm currently the president of the Middle Atlantic Blind Golf Association, vice president of the United States Blind Golf Association, and vice chairman of the International Blind Golf Association. My goal, my objective is really to promote well-being among blind people, try to get them, encourage them to get out there and get involved. And, and that's for blind people. That's my message for blind people. But I have a message for, for sighted people too. There's a lot of people that really don't have a lot of exposure to blind people and they, and they don't know what they can and can't do. And don't, uh, don't come in with a preconceived idea that these people are helpless or can't do anything because it's further from the truth. Right here, man. So what we'll club. do, we'll point the, the shaft or the club in the direction that he has to go so he knows. Yeah. And then we work it from there. Okay, if you want to. All right, I'm ready. Okay, I'm aiming you down the right side a little, man. Okay. All right. Right there, sir. Yeah, that looks good. Good? Yeah, you got me? All right, listen, you're a little close to the stance, so let it go. This way? Yeah, good. When I first started playing golf, I had I had my vision was fine, it was you know perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And then as uh, as it started to, as the vision started to go, mm -hmm. first I started losing the the ball in flight. Okay. So I could see it on the ground, I could see it, I could see my final target, I could see everything around me, but I just couldn't see the ball in flight. Yeah, yeah. So I need somebody to spot the ball. All right, Jimmy, let's see what you got, buddy. That went far right. And then as, as time went on, you know, they, the things started to fade. And um, I guess when I was about 50 years old, when I, when I stopped, when I lost all my sight. Okay. So then I couldn't see the ball on the ground. Gotcha. And that changed everything. When you can't see your object, you're swinging at that, that really changes everything. Yeah. yeah. You good? Yeah. So I'm Michael Tobey. I'm Mario's son. Uh, I coach for him. Every aspect of the golf game gets talked about through us. Good. 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 Right there, Jeff. Yep. Good. Okay, I'm good. We have a, a communication throughout the whole round, whether it's um, distances, whether it's literally describing the course. Uh, what, what we have in front of us, is it a bunker, is it a hazard, is it uh, water, do we have to carry it, do we have to be short of it? Um, what kind of ball flight we might want. There you go, a little, little thin, we're going straight. We're in the fairway, just thin, good yardage. Do you continue to golf like as your, your eyesight was going or was there like a hiatus in between? There was about a, a, a four year period where I, I played very, very little golf, maybe just one, a couple times a year with my kids or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, right around 2000, uh, somebody told me about a, a blind golf organization in our local blind golf, which was a Mid-Atlantic Blind Golf Association. Yeah. But it, it really changed my life. It, there was an opportunity to continue playing golf with, with my peers, people that couldn't see. Yeah. That was the start of me really starting to get a handle on losing my sight. Oh. 
Now we're nowhere good. Um, top it straight. Okay, dead straight. As we get closer to the hole, my steps or procedures get more precise. You know, once we get inside 100 yards, we're, we're, very, we're very meticulous about the yardage and which clubs to pull and how we're gonna hit it and stuff like that. Good? Yeah, it's good, man. Got me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good swing. Just unfortunate. Dang, that. Good swing. Yeah, big, big swing, but too much. Where'd you go? I went. I went in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so seeing how blind golf, how, how that swing actually works, is intriguing. Um, because you're, you're having a, a lot of faith on your muscle memory opposed to your eyesight. A anyone walking, you know, on a course trying to trying to do that, you know, they're just gonna look at the hole, ball, close their eyes and swing. Having to have someone, you know, guide you to the ball, tee up your club. Wait, did you say close your eyes and swing? Yeah. Is that what you do? <laughs> no, do I? <laughs> When we get really close to the green, say within maybe 20 yards of the green, I start pacing it off. Joe and or Michael will walk with me and we pace off the distance. And that's just so I can get a better feel for the exact yardage. I mean, they could say 20 yards to me and I understand what 20 yards means, but for me to get a better feel, I want to see if, it, if it's uphill or downhill or side hill. You know, that's information that I get and, um, and you know, we'll walk it off. And <laughs> it's hard to find good help. You know? <laughs> there. Okay. Right there. Too much left. There, there you go. Good. You say 30? Yeah, right there. Good. Nice. Wow. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Shot. Beautiful. Been high. Good job, dude. Good. Incredible shot. Thank you. Thank you. Joe's, uh, my coach is a, uh, that's a special, the short game. Really? The short game, we were like the first year, that's all we did, it was just short game, and that's helped tremendous for What are some of the things that you've worked on with Mario over the course of, of collaborating as his coach? Friendship, big time friendship and trust. We work on a level, try to take her a little here and there, but he throws away what he doesn't feel is, isn't right, so that's good because he knows that what his swing is supposed to be. And we try to tweak a couple of things else to tell him work out and get rid of it. We go on. But I mean, you know, for him and what he does, it's just impeccable. You feel this in your feet? Can I walk with me? Yeah, okay, so yeah. Just, just walk with me again one more time. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Three, right? That's three. Are you feeling your feet where it's moving? Yeah, it's kind of Okay, good. so I'm gonna put you above the pin. Yeah. And maybe we'll just like try to lag it there. Maybe one, two. Yeah. What do you think? Two. Do you think two? Right there. Mm -hmm. right there? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. The punch just rolled right off the hole. Did you see the line? Do you know where you're going? <laughs> I'm going right here. Okay, good, yeah. All, All right. right. Yeah, that's it. Tough game, right? Tough game, man. It's a mental, it's a mental game, honestly. All right, so I think we ended that, what was that six strokes? Yeah. Yeah, I missed the part five. All right, we'll, we'll get it back on this one. This is a uh, part it's a three. Part three. Yep. It's a challenging part three. Well, I, I have devices that tells me the distance to uh, to the hole. Hole number 10, 270 yards. And you know, I'll talk to Joe or Mike, Michael, who's ever coaching me, and they'll say this is a driving hole or we need to use an iron or something like that. And I like to pull my own clubs. So my driver obviously is the biggest head, mm -hmm. and then this is a hybrid, and I can just feel the head, and I know what that is, and my putter's always here. Mm -hmm. And what I do is on the shaft, there's tape here, and depending on the position of the, of the, this is an eight because of the position of the, 
looked at the uh, tape on the shaft. Mm -hmm. This one's a seven because it's further down the shaft. Okay. And this is a nine because it, it butts up to here. Now this is my five and six. They have different kind of tapes. Ah, uh, okay. And they and they're different in the same position. So this is a six iron. This is a five iron. And then all my wedges are in the back here, and they do the same thing. And we, I have all different texture tapes and. So by that, I can, I can tell my clubs right away. That's smart. I tried to put Braille on here at one point. Really? And I just wasn't. I it wasn't, wasn't working? I wasn't fast enough okay. with the Braille. Okay. This, this is a much easier system and, and very fast. Yep. Yeah. And I like pulling my own clubs. I like to do as much as I can on my own. Yeah. Yeah. I played pink clubs my whole life. The very first set of clubs that I've ever bought, you know, uh, was, was a pink club. And I was sold on them. And then years and years later, uh, I did an article for a newspaper, and the reporter says to me, he says, do you have a sponsor? And I said, no. I said, I tried to approach uh, Ping, and you know, it just didn't work out. He goes, oh, I have some contact, and he approached Ping. And, uh, Ping reached out to me and says, yeah, we're very interested. So, uh, so I've had a relationship with them for 10 or 12 years now, where uh, you know, I get fitted and um, you know, do custom fittings, and you know, they provide me clubs, and, you know, I, I love Ping Clubs and, and Ping's been, been good to me, so it's a, it's a good relationship. So you got Mike? Um, you remember this whole down, yeah, yeah, down, yeah. down hill, we got a little wind in our back. Uh, we like, we like 160. Good. Right there, Michael. Good? Yeah. There you go, good swing. Get there. Get there. Give me. Gonna be just short. Where's that? Just short. We're chipping a butt. Okay. We're close. Cool. Okay. There we go. Good swing. Leaking a little bit. Did that go too far? That good was swing, too, man. That good too contact. Far. <laughs> that was great contact. Yeah, this hole was challenging. You, you you put too much on it, and you go right over the uh, over the green. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's a little bit intimidating with the ravine in front. Definitely. And, you know, so. I learned so much from Mario watching him play. Just for instance, like when I first met Mario, I think we spent at least five, six months just practicing short game. You know, and as you see today, it paid off. Okay, it's gonna land probably three yards long. You're still on. Everybody has a golf swing. It's just learning what the face thought and how to control that face. I don't think Chip's too bad. I mean, you know, the, what he would have to work on is more understanding what impact is about, where the club face is at impact. And yeah, he took good on a couple shots. Not bad. Not bad, Joe. Not bad. Not bad. You know, but it's just feel now. Yeah. It's just a yeah. little feel. That's right? awesome. Yeah. So how long have you been um, actually like coaching and teaching golf? Uh, I started back in 1994. Mike, will you see that old cup hole out there? Yeah. It's just inside that. Okay. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Ooh, is that too much? Now I'm going to help you. Okay, now move your body. Uh -huh. There you go. Now look at that cup there. Okay, good. Eight inches. I don't think I put enough on it. Good putt. Wow. Tap in. Wow. All right, Jim. Mar, you got the you got the big dogs with you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good putt. I brought my A team with me today. That a boy. Awesome. Good job. Right, that was a fun hole. Good job, Jim. Thank you. I can hire I can hire these guys out to you. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> immediately. I need I need it. <laughs> Good? Yeah, you're good, Mark. Boom! Oh, yeah. 
Good ball, buddy. Crushed. Thank you. Yeah, just need to All warm right, up. Yeah, you, you can walk to the court. <laughs> <laughs> just need to warm up a little bit. All through season one, water's been kicking my ass. I go to my happy place and I still get shut down, but uh, I'm not going to let this little puddle ruin a fantastic day with some fantastic people. No, no water, but also not on the same course. <laughs> I mean, the, the, yeah, same hole. When I when I play in tournaments, yep. I uh, I get I get after at least an hour, an hour to an hour and a half before time. Just to like get pra practice. Warm like up and practice and stuff like that. And we go through chipping, we go through putting, and we go through iron shots and, and drivers and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it's just just my routine. Yeah. You know. So what, what is like the biggest challenge now for you? Like going into, you know, you, April's coming up, Worlds. Yeah. What's the, what's the biggest like hurdle you have in front of you right now? Well, you know, Joe and I are working on some swing changes and, and I'm trying to solidify the swing changes. Okay. And I'm at the point now is that, you know, I'm okay where I'm at. Let's just perfect what I have. Yeah. Just get it better. Okay. I, uh, and, and, and that's it. And, you know, no, through the winter, I usually take off and I start doing a lot of, uh, off-season conditioning, okay. you know, strength training and stuff like that, which I don't do in season because it affects my swing. Yeah. I swing on a clock, so, you know, your picture of something waist high is 9 o'clock and something directly over your head is 12 o'clock, and, you know, I picture where, where I want the club to go back to. I want to go to 9 o'clock, and I take a regular swing with that. So 9 o'clock is, you know, like, you know, a waist high. And that's what I feel like. I don't, you know, I don't know what it really looks like. Yeah. But from 9 to 3 here, with this club, we're going to give me 50, 50 yards. Okay, so, okay. And so now this is 60, so it's, it's going to be a little bit more. Gotcha, okay. And, and so, and I do, I have that with all my wedges. I, I know those distances. And I hit them right. Yeah. They're pretty accurate. Okay. Good swing. Sit down. Beautiful. Wow. Good job, man. Like that. That's square. Right? Okay. Yep. Again. Nine. The three. Pins in the back. You're yeah, back probably way. Eight foot putt just past the pin. Nice shot, man. Thanks. Not over it. Get up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> almost. almost had that bounce. Almost. almost had that bounce. Almost. That felt good, though. That felt good. What's been the most challenging tournament for you? You know, the one that means the most to me is the one I just finished, the, the Nationals. So that and the World. Yep, Those yep. are the two. All the other tournaments, I just really, I always, I'm always trying to perform well. Yeah. But those are the, those, to me, are the, those are the two most meaningful. So when you, when, when you won that tournament, um, na Nationals, what was, um, what was going through your head? Was that like something? I won for about four or five years in a row, and then, then I had uh, a, a bunch of like health issues, medical issues. I had a heart attack and, and 2017, oh. lost 50 pounds, lost a lot of strength, lost a lot of coordination too. Oh wow, okay. And uh, it just took me a while to get back to it and then, you know, get settled on a coach again, oh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and just kind of mm -hmm. get things back in order. And, and, and that's, it was a journey, it was a real journey. Yeah. And, you, and if you don't enjoy the, the journey, you know, exactly. you're, you're not, you're not going to enjoy the, the, the And I do, I, you know, I love practicing, I, lo I, love, I love striding for something. Don't fan it, just take it on me, right? Yeah, yeah. Right there? Oh, uh, yeah. Good. Ooh. Nice. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> That's a birdie. Thank you. That was great. Hey, Jim, if you want to play, just, that was, just, you know, just jump in anytime you want. That was amazing. That was great. Thank you. Good job, man. Wanted to be able to, to do that on camera, so just so people understood, uh, had an appreciation of, of what what a good a good blind golfer is capable of doing, and I was very happy that we were, was able to show that on on film. I, the fact that he was able to put this time in to become this good and have that tenacity to keep going and have that drive that brought him to this point, that brought him to best in the nation, and seeing the best in the nation sink that putt on that birdie was unbelievable. So I was just talking to um, to Mike, and I was asking him like how, you know, how being your coach has like impacted 
your you get your relationship, father and son. He, he had nothing but positive things to say. Oh, but you know, I, I mean, I love the competition. I mean, I, I play for the competition, but you know, in the end, to be able to spend that kind of quality time with your kids, yeah, yeah. you know, Michael and then my other son, Matthew, mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, that those are the things that last forever. Absolutely. You know, I think my family's close anyway. I think we've, we've always had a close relationship, but having the opportunity to play with them and, and spend three, four days of just undivided attention, you know, with each other and, and doing something you enjoy, I, I think is, is really a, a great relationship builder. Uh, so it's strengthened our relationship even more. It's, it's really been a bonding experience for, for all of us. Of course, me and my dad, me and my brother, me and my mom, I mean, we talk about everything. We talk about uh, the mental side of being a coach, um, the physical side, how uh, you've heard, we got a lot of conversation with Joe, the, 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 the actual game part of, of golf, but it takes, it takes the whole crew. Um, Cause the mental part is, it's bigger than you think. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot to, to, um, to navigate. But um, I think we do well. I think it's just, just communication. And that's kind of our family is a very good communication family. <laughs> One of the things that's important to me is I want to make sure it's rewarding for them and, and there's something in it for them. And, and I try, I, I really try hard that, you know, it's, that they're, they're enjoying themselves and they're getting something out of it. It's not, it's not all about me. It's about, it's about us. It's about, you know, what we can do. And I, and I really try to adhere to that as much as possible. Try to make it a, a good and positive experience for my coaches, you know, because without them, I'm, I'm not playing golf. But to have that quality time, you know, with, with my son, with my kids, both yeah. my kids, and, and with Joe too. Can we talk about how, um, you know, the relationship of Mario has impacted your life? Oh. Um, we got another family. So I get choked up. I got a new family. They brought me into their family. And, uh, it's like just amazing. <clears throat> and my family accepted Mario just as this family accepted me. And I wouldn't have any of little one. So, Jimmy, in, in some of my tournaments, uh, they make, they require me to wear black eye glasses. Even though I'm blind, they still require me to wear black eye glasses. So, I'm going to challenge you on this hole. So I'm going to give you my black eye glasses. Okay. I'm going to lend you one of my coaches. Okay. And you have to keep the glasses on from now until you knock it into the hole. Fantastic. So one hole. So I, I give you, I'll give you my, my best coach here. Good coach here. So. All right. Okay. I think I'm ready. Go ahead, Mike. So hold on to his elbow. Yep. And he'll, uh, do you have your you have your club? I do now. Yes. Okay. So he'll tee your ball. Uh, you I have a ball. I can get it for you. Okay. Uh, you need a tee, right? I need a tee. Usually I'm the one doing the challenging, so when Mario challenged me, it was, uh, uh, it was exciting. Um, and I was nervous, obviously. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. Uh, he's taking away my eyesight, and I'm, I'm going to be playing at a fair level with him at this point. Or, or what you could consider fair, because I'm terrible. Don't embarrass me, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I got money on this. Every golfer has their own strategy with their coach. Okay. And they're all very different. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I'm planning to do is I'm going to put the ball down. Okay. Um, you're hitting driver, so we're not talking, we don't care about distance. We're just hitting as far as you want. Okay. Comfortable with. You take an easy swing. Um, I'll tee it up and line you up. Perfect. Good. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, you're going to take cracks here. Hold on to the club. Okay. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> okay, I'm going to back you up a little bit more. Okay, okay. Get you a better lie, and I'm going to move your body this way. Okay. Well, my dad is so much easier to move. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. So this is, you're going to um, set up around this club. Okay. So this will be your swing. So you can take a practice swing. Let me know when you're comfortable. I'll put the ball down. All right, feeling good. I, I saw a little off the balance there, though. Yeah, I lied. Just a little bit. You good? You're, you're behind the ball. You comfortable? I'm good. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna back up and you're ready to swing. Okay. All right. Here we go.
I heard something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you hit it. Yeah. Cool. And you hit it. I think that's good. You do? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to me. Good job, Jim. Thank you. Thank yeah. yeah. you. That backswing felt so comfortable. And when I was coming down, I felt the club hit the ground before it hit the ball. And he was like, hey, good on you for actually understanding that and using your other senses. And then Mario went right after me. And I heard Mario make contact with that ball. And I knew right away, I was like, oh, he, he crushed this. Yeah, so he hit a high straight fall. I mean, was just, just off the right side of the fairway. I mean, he's deep. Okay. Deeper than you. So Michael, you drive you drive Jimmy's car. Okay. okay. <laughs> the brakes are a little finicky on it, so just. <laughs> All right, so I will take your club and I'll put it away. Okay. And keep holding on to me. Okay. All right, so you're going to be in the path of the sheet, obviously, and that's what happened this time. All right, there's the top. Yep. Comfortable? Yep. Yes, yeah. sir. How'd that feel? Um, when I was coming down, it felt a little awkward because I obviously I, I couldn't see the ball. Uh -huh. um, felt like I hit the ground before I even hit the ball. Okay. Okay. I think that's what. Uh, I definitely didn't go far. Did you feel comfortable? Like. What's gonna happen? Am I gonna even hit the ball? I felt comfortable in the backswing, uh -huh. and then when I was coming forward, I, I felt like I lost my comfort. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have a specific club that you are most comfortable out of the rough with? My five. I didn't do that. Mike was awesome. He was fantastic. He coached me through the whole the whole way. Um, he guided me, uh, and because so I kind of got to see what Mario goes through, uh, you know during his tournaments and during any time he plays golf. Give your finger and okay. point. So that's the direction we're gonna go. Okay. Okay, so take your practice swings. That's a that's a good thing that you just checked for. So good observation. How far out away you think? I'd say we're 180. I'm good, yeah. You good with the box? Oh yeah. Huh? Do it. I'm gonna put you behind the ball. I'm gonna straighten the club out. And you are directly behind the ball. Comfortable? Yep. All right, there you go. Wait, you made contact, it actually went really far, major push, the ball's gone. Oh, okay, hey, hey, that's that good was, though, that progress, was, right? Was, uh, big time progress, yeah. great swing. That's it, that might have been your best time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Oh, perfect. You're doing great, man. Oh, this is... It's, 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 it's a little nerve-wracking, but not well, obviously nerve-wracking, not being able to see. Yeah. Here, you, you're maneuvering pretty well. Yeah. There you go, right there. Good, man. I shot. Uh, my dad just shot. He had to carry the bunker just like you, and he put it right next to him. Oh, wow, jeez, he is incredible. Yeah, that was a really nice shot. Oh, my God. Good job, buddy. Pick you up and we'll, we'll putt with we'll it. We'll putt, we'll Yeah. I'm not going to carry that far. Still in the rock. Okay. Up, 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 up. And now we're at the greens. Okay. Okay. So a typical routine would be we start the ball mm -hmm. we'll, and pace it off. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, totally individual per golfer. Uh, we'll pace it off, we'll touch the flag, mm -hmm. and then we'll walk back to make sure we had the, the right measurement. And mm -hmm. then you, then we'll adjust from there. So let's say it's like four paces. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's and let's, yeah, it is. And let's say it's a little uphill, a little downhill, we would we would then adjust. Okay, it's a little bit downhill, so we'll play a, bit, a little bit less, probably two, two step putt. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. This looks pretty flat. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll walk it off. So we're at the ball, we're gonna start walking, so keep your pace from here. Feel your feet, Jimmy. You feel what's in your feet. And we're at the pin right now. Okay. Um, all right, so hold on to me. We'll, we're gonna round yep. the, the pin, and then we'll walk back. Uh, less. Less? Still less. Um, you want a, a more smooth swing, but I like that pace. There you go. Okay. Okay. Should be a lot. Too much? Oh, you probably doubled it. Ah, okay, okay. So he just put is probably a pace short. Okay, okay. Let, let, let Jimmy. All right, Jimmy, it's up to you. And I, you are behind the fall, lined up. Go ahead. 
All right, that's in. Oh, oh, get out of here! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's so. Oh, that's awesome. I think you can take them off. Oh, okay. All right. Great job. What an experience. That that was yeah. cool, man. Wow. I, I Thank really, you so much. I'm impressed yeah. by you. Wow. Taking the blackout glasses off, it, immediately I got, you know, huge, huge color rays just hit, hitting me, overwhelming me at first. But what it really did is it gave me a new perspective on, on, on Mario and blind golf. What they have to do, what they have to overcome, all these hurdles to, to play a sport. It's, it's humbling for sure. I was very impressed with what Jim did, honestly. It, it's not only is it intimidating, which it is, but it's hard. I mean, it's just straight up hard. You can't see anything. And I think it, it, it meant a lot that Jim, oh my God, Jim's awesome, that he took it to the full scope. Once he got set up, I'm sure it was uncomfortable, but they looked like good swings. They were good, arguably his better swings. So how was that? That was um, that was an interesting experience. Interesting experience. <laughs> I feel like I, I I know more about like my swing now. Though. I think the experience with Jim putting the blackout glasses on for a hole, I think might have been enlightening. Uh, we we've used that technique on a, on a lot of people. I play with a lot of scratch golfers, who you know for nine holes will hit a 36 and we put blackout glasses on them and they'll they'll hit in the 60s or in the 70s. You know. It's a, it's a totally different experience. It's so much more than just swinging with your eyes closed. It's relying on someone else. I, I, I certainly have a, a huge appreciation for, for what the coaches do, but an even bigger appreciation for, for anyone who chooses to pick up the sport of blind golf. The thing that, that I really, you want to make people aware of is, is first, you know, a message to, to blind people, and, and that is to, to get out there and don't give in to your, your, your blindness. You know, don't hibernate and go into a hole. You know, get yourself out there and socialize. And don't let your blindness dictate yeah. everything in your life. I try to, you know, you know, lead by example, but you know, showing them what you can do if you really want to. Right. You know, I, the fact that I play golf and I do it well is, is a bonus, but what really, what I really enjoy is, is just being out here. Yeah. Being outside and being with friends and talking and socializing and... Having a good time with yeah. good people. Yeah. That, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what this is all about. This is not about playing golf well. It's about, it's about your mental health. Mm -hmm. you know? Golf is not always about winning. It's about having a good time and having fun with the people you're with. And I definitely felt that today. There's, there's so much love in this family and this group of people. We're at hole 18. Any tips? I mean, we, you birdied you birdied one of the holes. You're playing amazing. I'm playing okay. Uh -huh. Any tips for me on this hole? Yeah, so on this hole, what I would recommend is a long drive, you know, somewhere in a fairway, maybe in front of the green. Mm -hmm. So that would be my advice to you. Okay. Okay. Let's see if you we think, can- You think you can execute? Oh, we're, we're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> now, since we already went head to head with the blackout glasses, with this hole, we're gonna do a scramble still. We're gonna find out how low we can actually score, so. That's right, if we birdie this, we're on the pond. Yeah, I love it, I love it. Yeah. Good. Very nice swing, it's drawing. That went deep. So it's, it, it hit through the, through the fairway. Sounded good. He's in it a long way. Good. Good. Okay. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. It, but you're gonna have a really good outcome. You're on the green, middle of the green. Like I said, it's in the back. You're in the middle of the green. Okay. It's a good miss. <laughs> There we oh, go. Wow. All nice. right. Oh man. That was you you three have been so helpful today. <laughs> I literally took everything that Joe and Mike showed me today and taught me today and I just put it into that last swing. And it was beautiful and it felt fantastic. Joe and Mike, they're they're amazing. It's like it's like having like Batman's utility belt with you at all times. <laughs> it's, it's insane. I know, they're they're really 
obviously they're really good coaches and they, they take care of everything. They, yeah. they get, go ahead and get the balls and find it and locate it. And they're just, you know, I, yeah, honestly, I can't imagine playing without them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It might be all of it. It might be 14. I'm saying with the up and um, everything. Adjusted, yeah. 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 Right there, Michael. Uh, yes. Very good roll. Probably a pace and a half long. It's a good putt. Oh, yeah. Really good putt. Good. Right there, Michael? Yeah. There. You're right next to it. Tap it in. Good. Good tap. Hello. Jimmy? This was a lot of fun. That was awesome. Jimmy, yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. yeah. That was that was awesome. Big thank you out to the Golden Pheasant and Brian for setting this up. An even bigger thank you out to Mario Tabia and his family and Joe and Mike for coming out. This was an amazing time. I'd love to golf with you guys again. You know, if, if you haven't already liked and subscribed to the show, please do so. We're just a group of friends trying to create something uh, special with our own free time, and uh, we, we definitely appreciate the, uh, the support. And speaking of support, if you haven't seen it already, we have some fantastic merch. Definitely feel free to check it out. But we'll see you next time. I'm Jimmy Andriotti. This is Next Round's On Me.